So in this video, we're going to look at the determinant now as a way to determine or ascertain whether a system has a unique solution. So in a previous video, we looked at the idea that we could take a system of equations and write that system in matrix form. And then we also identified that if A inverse existed, we could multiply both sides of this, uh, this matrix form by A inverse. And we discovered that that meant the solution X was going to be unique, a unique solution that looked like A inverse times B. So we were guaranteed a unique solution. So what the formula does that we just came up with the A inverse equals one over the discriminant of A times the adjoint matrix for A. What this formula does for us then is gives us an, a tool. So it's kind of this theorem up here is another corollary coming from the proof of this formula. But what this formula does is give us another way to identify whether we have a unique solution for a system of equations because if A inverse exists, then we get this unique solution, but this inverse only exists when this determinant isn't equal to zero. In other words, we need A to be non-singular. We need A must be non-singular. In other words, the determinant can't be equal to zero, non-singular. So all we need to do to check whether a system has a unique solution or not is to calculate the determinant. So we, if we just grab out the coefficient matrix, 3, 4, 2, 2, and we calculate its determinant, 3 times 2 is 6 minus 4 times 2 is 8, if we see that the determinant isn't equal to 0, we know the system has a unique solution. If if the determinant isn't equal to zero, then the, the other two possibilities are what must be in play. So remember, a system of equations is going to have three possibilities. A linear system of equations is going to have three possibilities. Either that solution is unique, and now we see that the unique solution happens when we get a determinant that's non-singular or not zero, or the determinant's going to equal zero, so we have a singular uh, coefficient matrix, and then we're either going to get infinitely many solutions or no solution at all. So in the case where the matrix is singular, if we find the determinant of a coefficient matrix is zero, we may have infinitely many solutions. We may have no solutions at all, but we can't tell from the determinant how that's going to play out. 